Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. सहनौ भुनत्तु सहवीर्यम करवाबहे तेजस्विनावदी तमस्तुमावित विशावहे ओम शांति 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 6 to 10 of chapter 3. Karmendriyani Sayam Yah Karmendriyani sayyam ya Ya aste manasasmaran Ya aste manasasmaran Indriyartan vimudhatma Indriyartan vimudhatma Mithyachara sa uchyate Mithyachara Yastvindriyani manasa Yastvindriyani manasa Niyam yara bhater juna Niyam yara bhater juna Karmendriyai karma yogam Karmendriyai karma yogam Asat Savishishyate Asakta Savishishyate Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam Karma Jayo Hya Karmanaha Karma Jayo Hya Karmanaha Shari Rayatra Pichate Shari Rayatra Pichate Na Prasidhye Da Karmanaha Na Prasidhye Da Karmanaha Yagnyarthat Karmanon Yatra Yagnyarthat Karmanon Yatra 
लोकोयम कर्म बंधन लोकोयम कर्म बंधन तदर्थ कर्म कौंते तदर्थ कर्म कौंते मुक्त संग समाचर मुक्त संग समाचर सह यज्ञा प्रजा सृष्ट्वा सह यज्ञा प्रजा सृष्ट्वा पुरोवाच प्रजापति पुरोवाच प्रजापति अनेन प्रसविष्य अनेन प्रसविष्य ोस्वीष्टुक् हरि ओम एंड अ वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी वेर सींग about the transition from praja to prajapatihi from being a part of the creation to becoming a creator now when it comes to the science of materialization from a spiritual point of view the power to materialize is a very divine power as you advanced uh, advanced spiritually naturally your thoughts your desires they will all start manifesting into reality that's why it's very important to purify one's mind so that you don't desire the wrong things in life things which are harmful to you you don't uh, start thinking about negative things so a lot of emphasis is laid on purification essentially if you see what is this purification purification is nothing but removing the ego from within so on one hand the power to materialize comes from divinity only but the ego is also waiting to trade on these powers when the power to materialize starts manifesting there is always a chance of the ego taking over the moment the ego takes over what will happen is that instead of growing with these powers a sadhak will get stuck at that level later on in one of the chapters lord krishna will be talking about such people he calls such a person as yoga bhrashta yoga bhrashta means one who has fallen from the state of yoga yoga means union it derived from the Sa- sanskritam dhatu root yuj yuj means to unite to unite with the infinite so yoga bhrashta means you are no longer united you get so fascinated with these temporary uh, powers uh, or rather finite powers that you get into more ignorance even though you uh, you were into yoga 
yoga means the spiritual path due to the extra fascination or attachment to these powers what can happen is the ignorance can increase the background ignorance where you lose connection with the divinity such a person is called yoga bhrashta whenever your focus shifts from moving up developing oneself to self glorification then that is the starting point of your spiritual downfall self glorification means the glorification of the limited self as i have mentioned to you before making a statement factually is not wrong but when the emphasis is on that see if you say i have done this there is nothing wrong with that but i have done this the moment there is that ex- extra emphasis then now if you think about it you are you are getting disconnected from uh, divinity from the infinite and you are getting stuck at that level so when you take the various objects which are given to you by the external world like it could be wealth it could be name fame power position so many things family relationships whenever you get attached to any one of these you will get stuck there and when you do the spiritual sadhana and when your inner powers start manifesting there are greater chances of the ego taking over and you may uh, get into the self glorification and the moment that happens then the growth will stop there it is a question of time that's why he calls it as yoga bhrashta one who has fallen from the state of yoga so as sadaks right from beginning you need to be careful that's why a master cautions the students right from beginning if you see at the very starting of one sadhana what a master teaches a student is humility even when we have this session every sunday how do we start start it off with gently close your eyes do deep breathing that is a process of getting you attuned to that infinite it is not required for a master actually because a master is one who is always attuned he doesn't need to do anything special in order to get attuned it is for the student to get attuned for the frequency of the student to be a, to be subtleized if there is a word like that to be made more subtle so that the student starts vibrating at a higher frequency the entire focus as the chanting of om is done and then the om sahana vavatu is done and then we chant five verses from the bhagavad gita so all these things actually remove they they remove that extra importance which you place on your limited self it is to shift your focus from the finite to the infinite so right from beginning the practice of humility has always been suggested so last week i was telling you the difference praja and prajapati we started that so praja means being a part of creation prajapati means being above creation 
one who is the God who presides over the process of creation. So that's how he has become the creator. Now, one of the key things which was mentioned to you was that when you are attached to something, when uh, you are a slave, you will, your language will be that of complaining. As long as you are complaining in life, you can never create or materialize anything. See, in order to materialize something, you should vibrate at a very positive frequency. The moment you start complaining, then that reduces the frequency of your vibrations. It's no longer positive, it becomes negative. So that cannot manifest something positive, that cannot materialize anything for you. Let it be any kind of wish which you have. Let's say you have uh, a particular disease in your body. Now you want to regain health. That is what you want to materialize. Now I am putting it in a positive way. But a normal person's mind will not think in positive terms. The mind will keep on complaining about the disease. And the most interesting part is when you are in the mode of complaint, that will become a reality for you. Even if a solution is given, your mind will reject the solution. Rather, it wants to dwell. It wants to keep on dwelling on the problem. Why? Because that is the that is how the mode of complaint works. The more you complain, you it'll be it's very interesting. You will find that there are more things for you to complain. It's like a cumulative effect. Supposing you want to reduce weight. Now, if you carefully go within and see, if, if you have that energy of complaint within you that I am uh, overweight or whatever it is, you know, I am only giving you a few uh, common examples so that it becomes easy for you to understand. So, if that feeling is there, then that will generate a feeling of self-hatred, as it were. You, you will start hating your body for being overweight, according to you. Now, that is what we mean by the language of complaint. See, the language can be verbal. It can also be non-verbal. Actually, both put together is only the language. So, when it was said last week that when you are a slave in the creation, now you, you will use the language of complaint all the time. It is both verbal and non-verbal, what you feel. So, sometimes verbally, you may just artificially talk positive things. But feeling-wise, you may be feeling negative. You may be having a complaining mode, complaint mode. So as a sadhak, you need to do that self-introspection and see what is that energy which is operating within you. Verbal level, action level, verbal means speech. Then, uh, uh, pranic level, the breathing, the feeling and thinking. All these aspects you should examine. 
and what is interesting is wherever you have a problem invariably the energy of complaint will be running very strongly especially if you if you have if you're facing a problem and you're not able to find a solution there then uh, you have to do this research and find out you will find that you will be complaining you will be in a more uh, you will be operating uh, in a mode of uh, with a mode of complaint the more that energy of complaining is there the more you will be a part of praja creation only you can never become a prajapati you becoming a prajapati uh, pati means what you can never create or materialize whatever it is that you want in the future we will uh, have a special empowerment where the science of materialization also will be taught to you but a lot of purification is required even that has to be taught in stages only at one go if the entire power of materialization is awakened uh, one will not be able to take it either you will become very highly egoistic with it that can cause your downfall or uh, unknowingly with less purification you may start uh you know materializing uh what you don't want that is why the mental purification is very important so how do you solve this issue as long as you are a part of the praja you will be complaining but in order to move to the prajapati stage you will have to drop all that the ego is a big block and what is interesting is the ego which keeps complaining now uh, the e- the ego within you only makes you complain and talk negative when the power of materialization is awakened within you now the ego stops complaining but now it starts um uh you know getting itself attached to this power then you feel oh i am so powerful i am great i am this i am that all these thoughts will start coming see the ego in you is just waiting to attach itself to something or other either negative or positive so that it can keep you disconnected from the infinite it can keep you in a cloud of ignorance you should understand this process which is happening within you the smallest of things which you achieve the ego immediately comes to take the credit again when you say oh i have not done that if you try to do that way if you go to the that extreme also again it's a ego only we are only talking of that extra emphasis on that i the practice of being factual if you have done something yes i have done it nothing wrong in saying that if you have not done something i have not done this if you learn to be factual in life right from beginning the ego will be under you you will be the master and that is so important as you keep doing your sadhana and as you keep moving up spiritually this particular alertness alone is a must because there are so many uh, stages which you will go through as you advance spiritually whatever desires which uh, or whatever the um, desires which are unfulfilled for you today that is those objects which means so much to you today will mean nothing as you move up 
because they will all be easy to materialize when you move up to the next level but then subtler and subtler desires subtler and subtler achievements will become possible for you but there again you may get stuck so if you see the construction of these verses there is an inherent flow an inherent method which he is following to ensure that the ego does not come up that's the message which you get when you read the construction of these verses for example if you take this particular verse verse number 10 now what is the met, uh, the central message here he what he is trying to say is that you are the creator of your life if you want to materialize your goals fulfill your desires yagnya is the key this is the central theme but he doesn't put it directly he doesn't say you are the creator of your life straight away how has he uh, structured this verse he first talks about sahayagnyaha praja srishtva he doesn't even talk about you directly he says creation praja people so automatically you will relate to that so along with yagnya the creator created the creation prajapati and then he said so he starts from your level as a praja and he is slowly introducing this concept of yagnya as you are created the principle of yagnya was also there and the creator made use of that to create and then in the next line very carefully he says what did the creator tell all the people he said may you propagate by this by this may you propagate let this be the wish fulfilling cow of your desires ishta kama dukh so the emphasis in the second line may you be a creator even though he say there is a message he puts it in an indirect way with the accent on yagnya it is because of this great principle of yagnya that you have also got the power to create so he is shifting your emphasis from yourself to yagnya even when you are a praja is a sahayagnya praja sishtva it is a great principle of yagnya now as you become a creator he says it is only by the use of this principle of yagnya and from where has this yagnya come it has come directly from the infinite after two three verses he will be saying that the infinite brahman res on yagnya he is this very very powerful uh, principle you know when we come there that's why right, step by step when we move step by step it becomes easy for you to absorb so even though the message here is you are the creator he he has put the emphasis on the principle of yagnya so that the ego does not pop up and the ego does not try to trade over your the the, the trade trade uh, with the spiritual energy which you you will keep on gaining when you do your sadhana very interesting so he starts off with praja so your identification goes there there is a sahayagnya he makes you identify with the principle of yagnya which has come from the infinite and then srishtva pura uvacha prajapati now your focus shifts to the creator why why is he shifting your your focus externally to uh, a great being called prajapati creator there is a 
specific reason for that. I told you the when when you have the energy of complaint running within you, when you're constantly complaining and talking negative and feeling negative, you cannot create whatever you want in life. Now, in order to change that energy, you need to substitute that language or that energy of complaint with the energy of gratitude. The first step towards materialization, towards leading a fulfilled life, is to start feeling grateful about whatever you have. See, what is the energy of complaint? Where, where is it focused on? It is always focused on what you don't have. Now you may say, sir, isn't it factually true? I don't have it. Yes. But that doesn't mean you complain about it. There are so many things which you are having already. Have you ever said thank you to all that? Felt that, uh, 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 felt that uh, energy of gratitude within you? It is not about mechanically saying thank you, thank you. See, all these things are not at the superficial level verbally. That is also included. But we are talking of the energy which is running deep, deep within you. So, in order to feel grateful, in order to bring that energy of gratitude, he is shifting your attention from yourself to number one, yajna. The principle of yajna which has come from the infinite. That itself inspires you. And number two, he shifts your focus from yourself to prajapatihi, an external creator. One who has created this entire universe. So that creates an awe within you. It creates a sense of devotion within you. And the moment that devotion starts coming, you will become very humble. Humility automatically comes. See, when you don't have devotion, you can never be humble and vice versa also. If you don't have humility, you cannot have devotion. Devotion comes when there is that awe factor created in you. For example, you go on a holiday to some area which of nature, you know. You go to a hill station, somewhere where the nature is spread out, the hills are there. Now, the moment you see all that, you get so inspired that awe factor is created within you. You see the expression of the infinite. Whether you call it as an expression of infinite or not, that creates that awe factor within you. Immediately a sense of devotion comes to that unknown source. You may call it God. You may call it by some other name, you may call it nature, anything. But some force which is beyond you. Whenever you start focusing on something which is higher than you, automatically an awe factor is created within you. You become awestruck. And when you become awestruck, you automatically develop devotion, bhakti. And when you are devoted, you become very humble. And humility gives rise to gratitude. You become eternally grateful. So this whole process, you are a part of the creation. You have identified there. Now, instead of directly coming and saying, you are only the creator, then the ego will straight away shoot up. 
instead of doing that he has so beautifully constructed this verse wherein he is expanding your vision by starting this verse with sahayagnyaha so immediately your mind soars so high sahayagnyaha praja srishtva when the entire creation was created along with the principle of yagnya have you created the principle of yagnya no it is beyond our existence it has come directly from the divine so that all factor is created and then he says pura again right at the beginning of uh, the creation watch something was told further that all factor is increased and who said it whatever was said who said it prajapati the creator himself said now the all which you feel will increase so much your hair sta- starts standing on their ends see if you go with the flow if you go go with the flow of the energy which is setting automatically you will feel so inspired it doesn't matter what he said before even coming to that the psychological preparation which the first line does to a sadhak is something which is amazing sahayagnyaha praja srishtva pura uvach prajapati that supreme creator now you are so much awestruck that your emph- the emphasis has moved from the limited i you you get detached from the ego and you become one with the totality as it were you become one with the creation and the creator you 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 are so inspired so automatically you you bow down in devotion this is the, i'm only dramatizing what is what will happen within you and when you bow down with utter devotion you become very very simple straightforward honest humble and when you are in that state of devotion and humility what is that energy which will be created the energy of gratitude wherein you start counting all your blessings and if you start saying thank you the most interesting part is the more thank you is said you will find that the more things are there for you to say thank you i told you no the more you complain you will find that there are enough things to complain about the more you are grateful you will find there are enough things to be grateful about that's why in the last session i said the world being the same your perception changes you just have to make a start unfortunately due to ignorance you have made a start in the wrong direction of complaining now that has just had a snowballing effect you first you started off with complaining uh, with about one thing now the moment that energy uh, got installed within you now you 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 would have found that there are five things to complain about then the mind would have complained about the five things and those five would have become 25 25 will further move just like that today you just have a list of complaints and that has become a reality for you and when you are caught up in this cycle this is a samsara you know you can never ever awaken 
the higher powers which are there within you. See, when a person is caught up in a problem, any amount of counselling you give, anything, whatever you say may, may, may be 100% correct, but that will not appeal to that person. What he will want, he or she will want is that you should also come and discuss about the problem only. Everybody wants to keep discussing about their issues without wanting to find a solution. See, if you go to a master and discuss about your problem in order to get a solution that is different. But no, the mind just wants to keep on indulging in complaining. The, e the ego is what is prompting the mind. So in order to awaken your spiritual powers, first this energy has to be changed. The energy of complaint has to be substituted with the energy of gratitude. And the very construction of the verse itself is giving that message. It is only when you apply the yogic approach and go deep into these verses that you can really, really get the message, the different messages which he is, uh, which he is giving. If you just read all this superficially, you, you may just get to know a few more things. So what? Okay, earlier you didn't know what was verse 10 of Bhagavad Gita. Now you are loaded with some information. You read a few commentaries here and there. You have read uh, uh, Shankara Bhashya, Adi Shankaracharya's commentary. You have read Ramanuja Bhashya. What Sri Ramanuja said, you have read Madhva Bhashya, what Madhvacharya gave and various other commentaries. So what now? You are just loaded with more information, but it is only the yogic approach which helps you to go feel the energy which is being radiated by these great masters and absorb that energy. So, as he is talking about the Prajapatihi and all that, there is an inbuilt energy flow which he has given and that you should pick up and start practicing in your life. Moving from the language of complaint to the language of gratitude. Again here, language is not restricted to mere verbal language. The feeling, thinking, everything. You know, whenever people want to meet me, I always tell them, you send me a mail. Why do you want to meet? And I see their energy pattern. And when that person is too caught up with their problem or are in a state of complaining, impatience and all that. There is no point in meeting because anything which is said will only temporarily kind of satisfy that person. But again and again, the same thing will keep, keep coming up. So I tell them, do some sadhana. See, uh, the, the energy pattern has to change. If you see, in the first chapter, when Arjuna was talking, he was in the mode of complaining. You, if you read the first chapter, he asked Krishna to place a chariot in between the armies so that he can assess the strength of the opponents. He wanted to see who are fighting uh, against him. It's not that he didn't know. This, this is what a warrior does to assess basically, to just to get psychologically prepared before the battle. And when Krishna did that, now he got uh, Arjuna got into a negative uh, flow. 
the thinking, feeling, everything started getting corrupted. And he started complaining. Why have I come here? What is this? How can you ask me to do this ghora karma? Terrible action. What will happen? This will happen. That will happen. It was com- he was completely caught up with uh, complaining, with this negative pattern of energy. And what was Krishna's response to that? He just kept quiet. Silence. Because when Arjuna was caught up in that energy flow, anything which Krishna would have told wouldn't have worked. So he just kept quiet. And silently, when I am saying he kept quiet, that is externally. But internally, silently, Krishna was giving him that healing energy. That is what a master also does. See, many students think that uh, the master, you know, if they have a conversation with the master, then their life will change. It's not like that. Conversation is one method. Non-verbally, what a master does is what really transforms a student. But when you are not attuned to that, uh, to that level, you lay more emphasis on verbal talking. So Krishna just kept quiet. And he was giving Arjuna the healing. It was a prati prasav which happened for Arjuna. Everything started coming out. And through the healing process, it all started getting released. And what is most interesting is, when it started getting released, even though it is, uh, even at this point of time, he had not released it fully, but to a good extent where Krishna could work with him. Krishna could work on Arjuna's weaknesses. To that level when things were released, the most interesting part is, Arjuna immediately, you know, uh, folded his palms and he said, Krishna, now you are all-knowing. I I am your disciple. Please guide me. What should I do? He got into a mode of devotion, surrender, gratitude. Automatically. Automatically. See, there was so much of commotion going on in the battlefield. He was going through that internal turmoil. He was complaining, complaining, complaining. Krishna just kept quiet. And when the healing happened, uh, Arjuna suddenly realized that in spite of all this, he, he perceived so much of negativity happening. In spite of all this, there is nothing to complain because Madhava, Lord Krishna himself was there, right in front of him. Even though Krishna was there, right in front of him, temporarily he got into this mode of complaining. He went on complaining. And the more he complained, the more there was to complain. And in the starting of the uh, second chapter, that is the end of the first chapter, Arjuna said, I cannot fight and uh, bow. I am not even able to hold my bow and the arrows and all that. So he dropped everything and he started crying like a baby. He sat on the chariot and he said, I am helpless. Now all Krishna did in the beginning of the second chapter, just two verses he spoke. Kutastva kashmalamitam vishame samupastitam means how have you fallen into this state? Those words are not mere words. He was infusing that energy of strength into Arjuna. Arjuna, what a great warrior are you and you are sitting here and crying. Kutastva kashmalamitam. How can you how can you get into this state? So when he gave that powerful message for, the, for those two verses, what happened was Arjuna's energy pattern started changing suddenly. From the energy of complaint, it started changing into the energy of devotion and gratitude. 
and it is only when arjuna got into that mood yes so much is happening but how could i forget that lord krishna himself is there in front of me and when he is there what is there to complain there is really nothing to complain if i have any issue i will just bow down to him surrender to him receive the energy from him that confidence started building and then only krishna started the bhagavad gita and throughout the gita as the bhagavad gita progresses we'll see that feeling of devotion surrender and gratitude will keep on increasing uh within arjuna when krishna shows the vishwarupa darshan his uh, uh infinite stature now arjuna surrender and devotion goes to a different level you have to feel it if you read it just merely like a book there is no use now what you need to understand is that it is the same thing in life so many issues you are facing and you are constantly complaining but lord krishna who represents that infinite that infinite god is right there in front of you but you fail to get connected there instead you are getting connected with all the petty petty things the negative things so when you go to a master also you go with this energy of complaint what will a master do when no less a person than an avatar krishna himself kept quiet do you think a master will get into an advisory mode no way he will also keep quiet but the silent healing will be given the energy pattern has to change and it is only when the energy pattern changes from the uh, from complaining to that of gratitude the higher wisdom can be given so the journey is from moving from praja to prajapati what do you do practically how do you practicalize the yagna this you start practicing gratitude on a daily basis at least when you wake up every day in the morning as an exercise just sit for few minutes quietly on your bed before you get up just sit with eyes closed and offer your gratitude to that infinite reality to that divine power then offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters because your guru is not alone it's a lineage of masters then offer your gratitude to your parents to your mother to your father then offer your gratitude to your spouse to your partner and if you have children to your children because all of them have come into your life to give you certain experiences then to everyone i offer my gratitude to all others it it hardly takes a few minutes but this wonderful sadhana is a starting step of becoming a creator because it's see how you start your day is so important today what do you do as soon as you wake up even before sitting you take your cell and you start checking your mails or something or other you start reading a newspaper in the cell phone lying down itself some people have told me that they do all that how how is it, with what energy are you starting your day that is so important so i am giving you that homework today you start it off if you are feeling so frustrated in life it is because of 
this energy of complaint at work and that, that is the time where you need to practice this principle of yagnya feeling grateful is one of the uh, points one of the principles of yagnya whenever you are grateful you are doing yagnya whenever you are complaining it's opposite of yagnya so you start your day with that feeling of gratitude and once you get into that energy flow start practicing it in other activities also before you eat anything just offer your gratitude to god for having been provided this food see in every religion they always have a prayer before having one's meal before your lunch or dinner or anything why it is not that god is sitting and asking you uh, please thank please thank <laughs> say there is nothing that is a supreme state the infinite it is for you to get connected when you build that gratitude energy within you and then when you have food that food will become medicine for you or uh, one tamil siddhar he said unave marund means food is the best medicine today you are not doing that that is why you require other medicines <laughs> experience by experience if you if the energy of gratitude starts flowing the very nature of that experience will change it will become a yagnya when you interact with your spouse when you interact with your children when you interact with your parents with your colleagues when you go to office in every experience how grateful you should be that all these things are there for you in your life believe me once you start this there is no end to it you will keep on thanking 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 and without your knowledge without your ego getting boosted up you will move from a state of praja to prajapati prajapati is one who has the supreme power to create to materialize but has no ego He is always attuned to the infinite. This is a simple way, and that energy has been infused in this verse. One who can see it can see it; otherwise, he will just miss it. Sahayagnya praja srishtva puro vacha praja pati. Immediately, you bow down in gratitude. the other techniques and all that come later but this quality the this uh, principle which i have given you about changing that energy pattern from that of complaint to gratitude that will prepare you and purify you tremendously that itself is a path it's, it's very interesting if you just follow that the rest will happen so beautifully of course we are also going to see the various uh, techniques uh, other facets of prajapati how one uh, can master this all that we'll be seeing but this is the foundation because with the higher wisdom as i told you comes great responsibility if the ego takes over there then you can misuse all this so when we see who is this prajapati creator how how what are the different 
uh, facets of a prajapati. Now again he has taken an indirect method, he is used an indirect method. See let us not focus on prajapati here now, let us focus on that word srishtva. Srishtva means having created. So a prajapati, a creator, as a creator he creates, materializes. So what is this process of materialization? I will give you a few points, some insights with which you can start working on your life. As I told you, this whole wisdom, this entire energy cannot be given at one go. We will see that as we go along in the higher empowerments also. But enough material will also be provided. It's up to you to take them up and uh, practice them in your life. So, Srishtva means having created. One, that is Srishta. Srishta means created. Cre uh, okay, the process of creation. That's why this world, there is another word for this world and that is called Srishti. Srishti means that which was created. So, what is this process of Srishta? When we understand that, then you will get an insight about Prajapatihi, one who is creating. So, if you are able to emulate all that, if you are able to absorb those principles, then automatically you will get that power to fulfill your desires, fulfill your goals in life. So we will go into a little bit of depth of that word Srishta. It will help us to understand the uh, person Prajapatihi in more depth. So, Srishta means that which is created. Uh, that is the, the act of creation or the, that which is produced. When, whenever something is produced, we say Srishta has happened. This is a direct translation. Di, uh, the direct meaning, the direct dimension is creation. But the beauty of the Samskritam language is that this word Srishta itself contains the very ingredients of creation. It also contains the secrets as to how to become a creator. See, generally when objects are named in the good old days, they used to name it with a purpose. Even names for individuals were named with a purpose. Krishna means dark. Krishna also means all attractive. Dhananjaya means winner of wealth. Now the name of Arjuna, you know different names. It was all done with a purpose. The, when you understand the deeper meaning, uh, then that starts inspiring you. So, Srishta is talking about the act of creation. It also contains the different dimensions. That is, the different dimensions of Srishta give you the method by which you can become a creator of your own life. So we will see them one by one. There are so many. I, I, I will give you a few. Those should be more than enough for you to, uh, you know, start practicing. Otherwise, as I told you, this wisdom is infinite, like an ocean. More is given, the more there is to give. The more you know, the more there is to be known. That is what gets you into a state of humility. All the jnanis, all the great yogis, siddhas, none of them 
felt that they knew everything. The great Bhagavan Dattatreya said, I am only a Nitya Shishya, I am only an eternal disciple. The Guru of all Gurus was Dattatreya. And he says, I am only a Nitya Shishya. So in that spirit only we should get into this. If you get in, see, already, uh, you should be careful. The ego will be waiting, you know. Oh, now let me learn this and I will become a creator of my life. The whole thing will go off. That's why I have prepared you enough by explaining to you about the energy of gratitude, the complaining gratitude that is so, so important. So, one dimension of Srishta. Srishta means ascertaining. You can, as I am giving you, you can take these as different steps towards creating or materializing anything you want. So, the first now, of course, the first dimension is creation, that which is created or produced, that is there. But uh, now in this context of uh, going deep, the first step, whenever you want something, first you should ascertain what is it that you want. Now this may look very simple to you, but it's not so simple. The mind always focuses on what it does not want. I told you, know, the language of complaint and language of gratitude. Now, when the energy of complaining is running in your system, you will always be focusing on what you don't want. When you have a problem, when you are facing a problem, the problem is something which you don't want. But your mind will keep on thinking about it. Supposing you have a pain, let's say a knee pain or back pain or some other disease, anything, as I told you, being overweight, because uh, I've received at least two, three mails, different people asking me about tips to reduce weight. This first, this is a starting point. The energy of complaining and self-hatred is running. Unless you release that, you cannot get the desired results. You may do all yoga, this, that, dieting, all that. But again and again, you will face the same issue. Why? Because you have not changed that energy pattern from within. So when some disease is there, now what happens is all the time your mind starts thinking about that. When Supposing you have a financial issue, all the time the mind starts thinking about that. Now, that problem, whether it's a physical disease or whether it's a financial issue or a relationship issue, is that what you want? No. That is something which you don't want. Yet, you find that 99.9999% or I would say even 100% of your energies are directed towards what you don't want only. Now, Srishta means ascertaining, ascertaining what you want. What you want will always be positive. Even in that what you want, the mind will play tricks. It will put it in a way of negating what you don't want. Oh, I don't want knee pain. I don't want back pain. That's how the mind tries to do it. No, we are not talking of putting your goals in a, uh, 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 in a negative way. That is uh, uh, negating the, the what you don't want. It should be put in a positive way. It could be health. It could be strength. It could be wealth, becoming rich, whatever it is. Ascertaining what you want is the fundamental step. See, you call a, a child and ask the child, what is it that you want? But the answer will come. I want an ice cream. It, see, from its level, it is expressing its desire. But it always expresses its desire in a positive way. 
It's very clear about what it wants. Some children say, I want strawberry ice cream from this particular shop. So clearly, you know, I am amazed by that clarity. Which you also had when you were young, but as you grew up, because now you have become educated, you know, <laughs> so you lost this fundamental uh, way of uh, functioning. Today, there is so much of confusion in your mind. If I were to ask you, what is it that you want? You get so confused. Many, many sadhaks have told me in the empowerment program, when I say, now find out what you want, immediately I get mails. Yogishri, finding it so difficult. Can you tell us what we want? No, that also you, <laughs> you want. The, the, somebody, you know, you want me to do, it doesn't work. No master will interfere with what you want. You only have to do that homework. You should become very, very clear. If you don't do that, and then you are asking for solutions, it will not work. Because you will only be caught up with that energy of complaining. And, the energy of complaining will ensure that you are all your energies are constantly focused and directed towards what you don't want. All the problems which you are facing, those are the things which you don't want and all the time you are only thinking about them. Then how can you rise above them? So as a sadhak, start this process. In the higher empowerment programs, uh, I keep giving you this training. You know, I ask you to write down what you want, especially in the Finding Rhythm in Life empowerment program. Uh, I had given you the 12 aspects of life. In each aspect, what is it that you want? I told you, you know, keep on writing. Then that becomes like your horoscope. That's what, that's how you're going to live your life. Very, very powerful sadhana. Many sadhaks have been requesting after that program was finished to make that empowerment available online. Uh, I'll look into it because, see, when the empowerment program is conducted live, I am also sitting and giving the empowerment and monitoring the energy levels, all that. So that cannot simply be put online like that. Those are not like videos. Oh, please send me that video link. I will see it. It is not a video link. It is a empowerment link. Please understand that. There is a big difference. The Sunday discourses, the healing is given. Empowerment program is much, much more powerful. So, it cannot be put online just like that. Uh, a lot of uh, energizing has to be done so that the auto mode is activated and then uh, every time a person registers, they do bring it to my notice so that I do have a check on the energy levels and all that, how that person is receiving. And uh, if some specific blocks are there, the special healing is given. So all that is done. So, but I will look into it soon. We will make that also uh, available online. Don't become impatient. See, you should feel again, bring that gratitude. Yes, I was, I had the opportunity to attend it live. First feel happy about it. Then automatically, God will direct Yogishri also to make it available online because that's what your desire is. No, we'll see that. So in that, uh, so many aspects were given. In each aspect, how do you um, fix goals? What do you? What are the principles governing each aspect? We saw that. Now that is what you need to practice in life. Become very, very clear about what you want. 
then this healing will work so wonderfully. The yoga sankirtan sadhana which you do will become very powerful because you are giving a direction to the energy. See, when the master gives that energy, now you are receiving it. Supposing you are clear about what you want, the energy will start flowing in those directions and uh, this healing energy will uh, help you to break all those karmic blocks in those areas. And then your goals will start getting fructified. So, ascertaining is the first step. I will just cover one more dimension today because those two go together. The second dimension of Srishta is determination, being determined. So, one is to answer this question, what is it that I want? What are my goals? What, what do I want to achieve? If you say I don't want anything, either you are already a Stita Pragnya, no problem, bow down to you, you can go your way. Or you are in a state of Tamas. A person who has become one with the infinite will say I don't want anything because and the infinite contains the finite. So, when, when you say I don't want anything, it is only uh, an artificiality. You are being superficial. You are actually putting on a mask. So, that's why I am saying the, the, you should become like a child. That, the childlike purity is very important. So, ascertaining what you want is number one. Second thing is becoming determined about it. Supposing you say, I want this today. Tomorrow, what is it that you want? Something else you say. Day after tomorrow, another. Some people have, we, every week they keep changing their goals, you know. <laughs> now, if you are like that, then there is no, con uh, con there will be no consistency. So, you think 10 times, no problem. And then, did become determined. What, see, this is what I want, this, you are ascertaining. And then, become determined about it. Become sure about it. The, you know, you should never have this language of maybe, probably, some people say. So, one, you know, many, many people, when they come to me, meet me, I ask them, okay, what is it that you want? Uh, uh, they, they'll give. Okay, then I help them and say, do you want this? Uh, probably, yeah, when I think about it, <laughs> see, this kind of a language will not help you. See, I, th that is only a manifestation of what's happening internally in your mind. You should be sure about what you want. No probability there. Probably I want this. I think so. Some people say, what do you mean I think so? Why can't you be sure? Life is like that only. It is black and white for people who are willing to take a decision. It is hazy for people who don't want to decide. Now you decide whether you want to be a, dis uh, a decisive decision maker or an indecisive person. Here also, if you are an indecisive person, do I want to become indecisive or there also you will start seeing the pros and cons. You know? No. So, number one, ascertaining what is it that you want. And number two, becoming determined about that. So that tomorrow, to tomorrow day after, you don't keep on changing your goals. Because, once you fix a goal, one, see, goal is based on the desire which you have. Now, once you fix it, thereafter, the yogic principle is directing your energies towards that. That we'll be uh, seeing. In the next session, I'll cover that. But if that itself is changing. Imagine, you're, uh, uh, if uh, 
uh, hunter is hunting, he has to fix it. He can't keep on changing the target. Then how can he ever send his, uh, send his arrow? It is not possible. It's the same thing in life also. So what is it that you want means not based on comparing yourself with others and all that. Within you, what is it that you want? So simply don't, you know, say something. All those things you may have picked up from, uh, fr from others who may have told you. But deep, deep within you, what are the things which you really want in life? What do you want to do? Determine that. First ascertain that. And then be, you know, by deliberating, doing the analysis, become determined. This is what I want. This itself will make you very focused. A yogi is one who is extremely focused. See, today I am asking you to practice with the worldly things. That's how you start off with. But once you gather this power, finally, one day when I ask you what is it that you want, you will say, I want God. I want the infinite. And when you say that, it will be with full determination. And that is the instant when you will get enlightened. Today when you say, I want God, it's a very weak desire. So many other things also you're wanting. Nothing wrong with that. You first learn to gather your energies. They are dissipated here and there. And then we are going to utilize it to become one with the infinite. A yogi has immense powers. That was what was Lord Hanuman, you know. When Hanuman used to sit and meditate, it was complete, it was with complete focus. He was always in that state. That's why one of his facets, he was called Dhyanastha Hanuman. Means one who is established in the dhyana. So powerful. Now when I tell you about Hanuman, ah yes sir, yes sir, all that. But that is what you have to <laughs> now become. That is the very purpose of these sessions. So no escaping. Okay. So... We'll stop with that today. Such powerful sadhana principles have been given to you today. Reflect on them and make them your own. If you practice even a little bit of whatever is being given in, uh, in these Sunday sessions, I am telling you, you will you'll go to a different level altogether. Okay, so now we will uh, do the Nididhyasana. Meditation. Sit in a comfortable position. In these Nididhyasana meditations, I am also preparing you for the powerful, intense session which we are going to have on the Guru Purnima day in July. This time, it's, going, it's coming on a Sunday itself. So, we will have it on that day itself. So the energies levels are going to be very, very high. Not because of that, but uh, you are also getting prepared year after year. No? So your receptivity will al is also has also become high. And uh, slowly, slowly all the secrets are being revealed. You know? So 
all these meditations are also a preparation for that okay so gently close your eyes With every breath, I am getting into a state of deep relaxation. Feel the divine vibrations With every breath, I am going deeper and deeper into myself. beyond my physical body, beyond my emotions, beyond my thoughts, deep, deep within me lies my essential higher self, My self is 
divine From this moment onwards, I choose to be grateful for everything which I am receiving. I am Swayam Prakashit, Self-Illuminating. Offer your gratitude to God Supreme. Offer your gratitude to your Guru and all the Holy Masters. Slowly come back. Wriggle your fingers, your toes, rub your palms together to create a warmth. Cup your eyes with your palms. Gently rub your eyes, cheeks, forehead, top of the head, back of the head and neck. Slowly open your eyes.
वेलकम बैक सो टुडे सम वेरी पावरफुल प्रिंसिपल्स हैव बीन गिवन टू यू दे आर ऑल डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स of this primary principle of yajna at your own pace keep absorbing them and keep practicing them wherever you can it is learning and practicing which will help you to master anything in life more so when it comes to these great great spiritual principles it is by your own efforts that you become a yogi the guru shakti is always there to bless us the guru is always there to help us but remember that is not a substitute for your efforts so as the guru purnima is also nearing all of us should put in those that extra effort to be sincere sadhaks only then we can receive the higher grace okay so thank you very much i'll see you in the next session hari om